Yes. Fuck. Maybe. <laughs> yes. Hello? Yes. Hello? Hello? Hello, world! We are about to recap Obama. what happened last time <laughs> on... <laughs> Total Drama mid cry Oh, no. <laughs> Land sharks. What? <laughs> yeah, by the way, Mo. <laughs> you slept you through Everybody Lance dying, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what happened last episode is people kept walking and ran into land sharks after splitting off from uh, the Yadimaru. Two days of no real activity, but as you can see your destination in sight. A black dog ran across the road, showing a ill omen to the group. But everyone continued on, and then were attacked by two land sharks, also known as bullets. Uh, the party managed to kill one of them, and the other escaped. Bullet with both the horses. One oh, of the horse was destroyed. And Mo slept through all of it other than to wake up for a single moment to cast a single healing spell and then went back to sleep after being flung from one cart to another cart, remaining asleep. Uh, I'm glad everybody's figured out my character already. <laughs> <laughs> You're very well. Wow. That looks like some trouble. Here's some... <laughs> and out like a light. <laughs> I mean, your heal, the Does... word you used to heal someone was snoring, so. <laughs> Basically. Does and we left Mo off. also have narcolepsy? <laughs> no, nah, Mo's just lazy. <laughs> He's sleepy. I remember we ended with uh, the collection of bullet parts onto the one remaining cart, which was uh, Platt's. And then we were deciding where you guys were going to do whatever you were going to do next. Take it away. Yeah. Man, I just had the craziest dream, guys. Oh, there, was, there was weird uh, dog sharks and the horses were gone and I got thrown to another cart. Someone else throw something at him. If I do it, I'll kill him. Oh, no. Interesting experiment. I want you to stand up and just take a look around. Okay. He does a long, like, stretch. Um, where am I on the map? Oh, there I am. Okay. Uh, yep. That's uh, that's kind of like the thing that I saw in in the dream. What, what is a this wreckage of a cart back here. And it took a good look. That's the cart you fell asleep on. You're looking mm. around and you're in a cart full of a lot of random crap. Your head is was literally inches from an open bear trap. Did I break anything when I fell into the cart? Did not have. Luckily you didn't. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I actually rolled when you were flung. Okay, well, uh, uh, I will start slowly mending together the cart that I fell asleep in. Like, oh, little inch by inch. Destroyed. It, the land shark basically, basically did a belly flop onto it and then dug through it into the ground. It uh, is gone. It's not a cart anymore, it's a pile of splinters. Yeah. No. Could be firewood. Martin kind yeah. of chimes in. Maybe, may, you know, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe we'll get to the next place, and there'll be a lot of vampires, and you know, now we have wooden stakes. Why would you wish that upon us? Why, why, why would you wish that upon us? Because on, now we have stakes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Just distant dice rolling and hmms from Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I actually have a really good evil laugh. Doink. I don't like that fact. 
<laughs> uh, what still? What is? What is this small creature? It is a cat with wings. Oh, okay. That's more right. I was trying. I was trying to tell by the art. I was like, it's just a pixie, and is this the black dog that ran across? Uh, that was after the fight. I forgot to mention that. Uh, another creature. It was. It was the black dog from before, but it morphed into a two-headed dog, which was remembered as a death dog. They're very dangerous creatures and have a very deadly disease that one can take or contract from a single bite. It is dead. Uh, do I know anything like about these dogs from living in the woods? That is an adorable cat. I would say you can go ahead and give me give me a history check at disadvantage. I... See if your people ever mentioned anything about these creatures. That is a ten. Uh... Wait, no. Thir twelve. Yes. Uh not particularly, no. These just from looking at it, you don't think it's natural. Mm -hmm. I would like to take this with us. Uh, we are. Oh, good. We are. Uh, Mel will just pick it up and... One step ahead of you there. Oh, yeah. Try the to hoist the, the heads were over. cut off by Merton, and they were already collected to be taken for oh, okay. their disease for last session. I skipped over the minor details of those incidents. Uh, well, it looks like it's about time for everybody to get a siesta. Because apparently Furbolg language is now Spanish. <laughs> you have to commit to that. You better start Ganon. speaking fluent Spanish. <laughs> I, mean, I, need to, I need to download Duolingo. <laughs> and, Quick owl, you know how to stab people out of you say I'm gonna kill you. And with that, with uh with that, you hear a loud crack above you. Mo is going to ready a spell. Uh Sacred Flame. Oh no. Um, I'm only writing it. I'm not going to cast it. If it's like a creature trying to kill somebody, I will cast it. No, the the rain <laughs> sound effect. <laughs> it was a loud electrical crash as you are all trying to rest and breathe from this harrowing encounter with the land sharks. The clouds have begun to roll in and a storm approaches. Seems to be coming from the north. But it is. will soon be upon you within the next 30 minutes. Does it seem like it's a natural storm? Give me a nature check. Alright. I do that as well. Sure. <laughs> non natural it's... 20. Uh, Mo, it is clouds. Uh, Oren, you know that the general weather patterns with uh, how the wind should be flowing through this area. Yeah, it's it's early spring, so it's uh, it's the rainy season. All right, have fun. <laughs> Mama's hood is just like totally up. I'm not ready for pie. Huh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, good. It was just right there. <laughs> Got some pie. <laughs> so the rain's coming. The bullet has been harvested. Same with the death dog. You've got a cart, but no horses. What are y'all doing? Uh, uh, oh, long how suffering far? sigh. How how far <laughs> are we from Scenario City? Uh, you were attacked at about noon, and you were going to arrive in by cart and horse 
in about four or five hours. By foot, it should take you eight or seven to eight hours. So you should be getting there just about just after nightfall. How far off the ground does like the uh, platform of the cart, the bed of it, kind of sit? Uh, it, it, would it help <laughs> if I like described my plan to you first? And then... Sure. Okay, so I, what I was thinking is using mold earth to make just like a block that can push the cart. Because you can do a force. Hold on, I'll just throw it in the chat. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong thing. Go about to be an earthbender out here, just like moving the ground into the cart. <laughs> like, it won't be fast, but it's a five by five block of rock pushing a cart. Every six seconds we move five feet. Yeah, that's... It'd be faster to pull it. <laughs> Once again, Mo is very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> it would be faster to move it. I like that idea, though. Okay, now hear me out. It can work. I will say it can work, but somebody would have to hold, like, this... Okay, no, I guess the design is wrong. So it would, the car normally has four wheels. I okay. just, this is just the car design I had, so... Uh, so then Somebody would have to lift up out. the front parts that had the horses attached to it. But yeah, you could use the mold earth to move it. Would the Quacken be able to do this? What? Remember the Quacken, my spiritual weapon? It only lasts for a minute. Oh, is that... Straight spiritual up? weapon only lasts for a minute. Yeah. Well, I could get us... However far we get in 60 seconds. Everybody just get on the side. I've got a long trip. I as well start now. Okay. I'm just gonna go to the back and like get ready to push. I don't I don't think Oren's like could possibly be any help here. <laughs> I, I, I feel like if he tries to help push, he'll mostly just be holding on because it's so much too tall for him. him. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot this party has no strength in it. No, nope. yeah, I'm fixing yeah. that. <laughs> uh, I mean, Mo's just not good at anything. Uh, Mo will. I think Mo actually is the strongest. Oh, that's ironic. so bad. Oh no. Horn strength is only two better than Moray's. <laughs> yeah, yes, Orin uh, has, has a twelve. Or Orin has a five. I'm at a ten now. Oh. Oh, so Remember when I said I was going to make Vlad a strength character, and then I decided to make him a dex character because that's the better yes. way to play ranger. Yes. <laughs> I'm never making that mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> Next yeah, time, Mo I make is the strongest. Too. So, to be fair, in many other parties, that would not have been a mistake. Flex no decks. Flex no decks. Well, <laughs> technically, we could push up to like 30 times our strength score. So, with all of us, if, as long as we have some sort of strength that score, we could get it so to go. Heavy. I know, but I was just saying, like, with, with all of us. Yeah. And so, Martin yeah. with the highest strength, actually. All right, Martin's got a religious strength score. He's <laughs> a knight of some kind. <laughs> Yeah. Stra uh, even strap him to the front <laughs> and the Mo rest of us push well Mo will help pull and I am still going to use mold earth but I'm just going to try to like smoothen out the terrain as much as possible as you guys begin your journey the road does begin to get really muddy and very mucky you are all caked in dirt within five minutes of the rain and it is hard rain the wind is how, buffeting. How how much like mud is there on the ground? Like six inches or 
Like, how, how deep is the muck? Hmm. This is an important question. You know, this matters is is our gnome slugging through it or swimming? <laughs> it's about two inches. Okay. That's cool. But it does slow you guys down. Even with mold earth, does if you mold earth to make everything smoother, yes, you do continue at a regular pace. Though those in the back are whoever's like Merton gets tied to the front end. Every so often, somebody has to go and wake him up as he has fallen asleep at somehow. Can we just, like, give Orin a stick and, like, the dragon's breath bottle and just, like, dangle it in front <laughs> like a horse and a carrot? We could just put Orin on his shoulders and every time he starts to fall asleep, you whack him. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an idiot, you... Ho I hopefully realize. I don't think... Well Moira will take the duty of waking him up. She'll just land on his head and bat him whenever he falls asleep. <laughs> Got a condition, damn it. We're level four, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, we're level five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we leveled up after the fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, if he was using the bullet's bite, I would argue that we're level five. <laughs> <laughs> and if I had actually used the full damage of the deadly leap, maybe. But yeah, I I if you fucked use up the on full damage things. of the deadly leap. I would argue that we're level five, except that we, I would argue we we would all be dead. <laughs> dead. Yeah. Yes, so, yeah. Grayson would be down. Orin would be down. Yasna, Yasna would be down. Well, actually, Yasna right. and Orin would still probably be up in the air. So. Oh, true. Unless Just you had died ready. in the first attack. I'm fairly certain Platt would have survived. Hmm. Anywho, you guys are slogging through the mud and rain. <laughs> By the time... I want everyone to give me a constitution saving throw, as even with the Mold Earth lightening the load, it can't hold all of it for the full time. Or it can't... Uh, it doesn't deteriorate from the... Like, you can get the road in front of you, but... It is pretty tough for everyone through this entire thing. So just con saves all around. Seventeen. We're good. Five. We're Nine. good. Twelve. Natural one. Ooh. Uh, okay. Reminder for me. Uh, does exhaustion do saves or just checks? Just checks. Just checks. At oh, thank goodness. It's thirteen. Okay. Grace of the Platt. You two, like, you you felt everything today. You, Grayson, you lost your cart and horse. Platt, you lost your, your little donkey. And just the this storm and trying to push it, this poor cart through the storm. You both are just dead tired by the end of this. You both have a point of exhaustion. As you guys... The sun, you're guessing it's probably said it's hard to tell through the storm but eventually you do arrive at on uh, the west side or not the west side uh, <laughs> you do arrive at Scenario west City <laughs> <laughs> and in you the begin dark, I accidentally walked all the way around Scenario before finding it <laughs> <laughs> well you guys are like you guys went kind of North west, but you're coming now going more directly north. Hmm. But you guys reach Scenaria and you it's kind of hard to see. Like you can see some torches on what look like kind of walls, but the closer you get, the more it looks like it's just like the walls are very dilapidated. They don't even have ramparts on them. It, they're barely standing. They look like they've been scavenged after years of people just stealing stones from it. it honestly, if you didn't have the card, you could probably try climbing over it in certain places. It looks like shit. And this is the capital city? Of the country, yes. 
Jesus. Excellent. You guys <laughs> begin to approach what looks to be the gates in the distance. You can see some lights hanging out from oh. uh, one of the posts. Uh, a man runs out to you all. Uh, so as we're approaching and the man's running, I'm going to yell back, uh, turtle guy, uh, do you want to, do you want to do that thing where you light a torch and sing while you're walking towards the guy? No. Vlad is getting drenched. <laughs> should, should, should I? We'll be fine. <laughs> if they're coming to rob us, it will be a good thing. <laughs> uh, at this point, you guys are about 30 feet out from uh, the gates, and the portcullis is currently down. The man approaching appears to be wearing some type of poncho-looking thing over whatever, because you can't really see from without his pont or with uh, the poncho on, but he has a hooded lantern up. Uh, all right, state your business. What brings you to scenario? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Here for a delivery. Hmm. All right. Uh, how many of you are there? One, two, three, four. <laughs> please, please tell me that's in character. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm so tired at this point. Just one, nine, six. six. Wait, are Seven. we counting the? Are we bringing an NPC? I'm alright. I'll keep this for people. Fuck. <laughs> How are you counting these people? <clears throat> Sorry, missed him. Mm. Forgot right. he wasn't the actual horse. <laughs> <laughs> Got attacked on the way here. Could really use getting out of this rain. No problem. As soon as you uh, you pay the fee for each one of you, that's seven, so five gold each. Having, to be fair, stay out of the city as much as physically possible. On the times I have been forced to come here, has there been a toll? Not a legal one. <laughs> but if you don't want to get on the you, underground shit list. Considering that you have been through this place before, you know that corruption is rampant. About over 50% of the guards are most likely on... not on the up and up. Gotcha. So, so it's probably less hassle and problems for the future if we pay the toll. You would think that might be a good idea. All right. Maybe just kind of heavily like, what's it this time? You know, the entry fee. Five well, gold per person. Here's five uh, for me, and here's five for the cat, and here's five for the turtle, because he let me sleep in his cart. Well, that's 15. Where's the rest? Oh, I don't have any more gold. And Mo is just going to walk past him. <laughs> <laughs> he puts out his arm to block Mo as he pockets the gold and the rest. Didn't I pay for me? It's all or nothing. And it gives you a kind of gap tooth smile as you see he's not he's missing a few teeth Grayson's oh. going to turn to and pray that Platt has some more gold I'm looking at the wrong person <laughs> Grayson has spent all his gold on various things <laughs> how much do we owe him uh, you got three out of seven so 20 more gold seven, total. yeah Paying the other 20. I am pretty much out of yes, money. Yes, though, we'll pay. 
Yeah, Merton pays his. Right. So, Gesna, Martin. So we just need the ten. Uh, I yeah, give ten more. Ten. I get. He gives you a uh, kind of crooked smile. Pleasure doing business with you all, and welcome to Scenario. Pockets the I hate it backpack. already. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of hear him chuckling as he's walking off. All right, open the gate. After a few moments, the portcullis begins to rise as you are permitted entry into the city. This place uh, the is loved... already unpleasant. <laughs> I don't think it's, it's only downhill from here. <laughs> Martin kind of gives a sad nod. Yeah, it's not exactly the greatest place to call home, but... Well, it's home. Kind of. I pity you. And the oh. is just gonna, like, head over, like, Pat Martin on the back. <laughs> Thanks for that. Appreciate it, especially uh, holding up your uh, cart here. As the lot of you begin to enter into... Let's see. Yeah, you guys are on the east side of the plith, so... Yeah, you enter. It's not too bad looking, this area. The shops seem to be well maintained. The homes, pleasant enough. Definitely nothing too crazy or ostentatious. But definitely not what you would originally expect for the rumors that you might have heard about uh, the city being very dilapidated and run down. But uh, Merton begins to kind of direct the cart, and uh, I guess we'll, we should probably rest up for the night. I'll, why don't you all come to uh, the guild hall? Probably the uh, best place to stay. Probably cheaper than anywhere else, too. Take your word for it. Good call. We're right on the edge of the plith near uh, Vanden Bridge. So we're we're pretty close to the warren, so uh, do be careful that you don't uh, accidentally head over to that side of the city unless you're oh, ready. Mm. Uh, Platt and Grayson, you guys have only been on the east side, and you have not, like, you know that the warrens are not a place to really go unless you have to. If you're the reputable type of person and you don't want your pockets pit or your throat slit. Hmm. Hey, what are the buildings made out of? Uh, it... Hey. You know, <laughs> it is a... Tears. <laughs> <laughs> it is a hodgepodge mess of different styles. Like, on one street you see rice paper build, like, rice paper walls and the next you see like brick uh, buildings and the next one over is stone built up. Like it looks like most of the city is built from the different styles of the different countries around mid -Cryu. Like there doesn't appear to be like a single Scenarian style of building, just whatever style they've stolen for whatever they are trying to build. Uh, so Mo is going to go to uh, some of the people that have been here uh, before, because it sounds like uh, I'm sorry, was it Platt that was here before? Platt and Grayson appear to have more knowledge of this place, and Merton uh, lives here. Okay, well I'm, I'm at the Orn, front of Grayson. I'm I'm okay. thinking Orin has probably been here before, but not in like well over a hundred years. Yeah. That, that sounds about right, but the city is so, yeah. basically the same. Oh, okay. I keep forgetting like, how it is. Like, it is still crappy and still run down as it has ever been. 
Uh, so I guess while pulling the cart with Grayson, uh, Mo will kind of look back and uh, just kind of ask him, like, so where does all the corruption in this city stem from? Wish I knew. That's a question. Uh, this would be common knowledge to anyone who has come here. It is directly linked to the underground organization that runs basically everything in Scenario. It is a group called the Sakage. Aha! I did have it in my notes! <laughs> <laughs> I should trust my notes more often. <laughs> Do you tell Mo this? Yeah, but he'll say it real hush-hush. Like, he'll kind of take a look around, make sure nobody's real close to the cart when he says it. It's kind of like, everything here is run by the Sakage. But don't go throwing that name around. Oh, Looking around, the streets are basically empty. It's nightfall, and it is a storm. Mm -hmm. Where could I find these Sakage? Better question is, where can't you find them? Mo yeah. will look around, because he knows... Mo knows that he can turn invisible, but he doesn't know the level of invisibility of other people. What I mean is, any person you find in the city, solid 50-50 chance they're a member. But you never know, and if you go asking, you'll get your throat slit. Your throat slit. Okay. And um, the... hold on a moment. For the two people who know Jaren, you know mm -hmm. that uh, the word Sakage means the Lords of Shadow, and Kage means shadow in the common tongue. Go ahead. Uh, Mo. Uh, I am actually going to send you a private message on Discord. Ooh, fun. If anybody tries to sneak in. Like, later when we all separate to sleep time, if anybody wants to sneak in, I will also send you the message and listen in. But yeah. Cool. I like how Mo is getting ready for sleep time. He just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Mo's a very one track kind of person. <laughs> He'd be really good friends with Martin. <laughs> <laughs> he has narcolepsy, damn it. Unless you guys have anything else you want to say. Okay. Uh, Merton continues to lead you through the streets. Uh, a lot of you do begin to smell a slight bit of salt on the breeze as Sonara is a port town. Kind of. <laughs> it's not much of a port, it's more just on the sea. Anyways, after a while, you do see uh, a bit in the distance as the rain begins to lighten up a little bit. You do see what looks to be a bridge crossing uh, the Plith River. Directly on the close side of uh, the bridge, you see a large building. Uh, lights flowing through the cracks in the, the shutters, and you... As you get closer, you do begin to hear the sound of music coming out of it. Also right next to it is a large stable with what you can tell from as you approach uh, a number of horses, wagons, and carts of all makes and sizes. Ah, we're finally home. Uh, we can bring this inside uh, into the stables. It's uh, the guild stable, so it should be uh, should be all right. Should be. Uh, the Sakage doesn't uh, mess with us. We kind of have a standing arrangement with them for the most part. Um, At least when it comes to their not so great ways. So they don't fuck with us. Are you guys good? Kind of shrugs. I'm, we're mercenaries, so... 
I did not know that until this exact moment. <laughs> <laughs> well? <laughs> Can I be a mercenary too? Sure, you could uh, talk to Sybil when we get in. I mean, we're pretty open. We're just kind of a big family for the most part. I'm pretty new, though, so uh, you can uh, talk to her about it. And he'll lead you guys in to store the cart. He locks it up behind as he apparently has a key and heads over to the door. Uh, hanging above the door, you see what looks to be a sign that says the Blink Dog's Mug with what looks to be a dog, half of a dog on one side of it, and then the other half appearing on the other side. Ooh. Zach, all I can think of is Princess. Wait, uh, yes. <laughs> They're real dogs? No, no, it's just a wooden carving. Oh. But it does seem to... Uh, as you guys get closer and you get within 10 feet of it, the back half actually does disappear and the it kind of looks like the dog begins to animate and appears on the other side. Sits down kind of on the sign, wagging his tail, tongue out, then poofs and appears back on the other side as if teleporting across and the little animation repeats itself. So Mo is going to try to talk to this animal. Um, and Mo I will use, try. Uh, so I'll use speech of beast and leaf and also try to use animal handling to unload Oh, wow, okay. To try to get it to, like, stay still? Because it seems to be teleporting everywhere? You try talking to this inanimate dog. It does not appear to respond to anything you say. I'm confused. Is Mo trying to speak to a sign? <laughs> yes, Mo is trying to speak to a sign. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I thought you said it was animated and moving. No. It is. It's basic. It, it's... It's, it's some sort of magic that got imbued into it when the person approaches a certain distance. It has a little animated dog blinking across. And oh. just kind of animated. So it's not an actual dog. It's like just on the sign. It, it's magic. That, Mo, that's Mo not, isn't ready for civilization yet. That's, that's <laughs> sad. That's not... No, I'm just going with sad. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone enters the tavern. Uh, Merton stays back to hold the door open for everyone. Thank you. And inside looks... Com it looks almost as if there's a tavern brawl going on, but there are other patrons just sitting around drinking that don't appear to be paying attention to the brawl whatsoever. It is a very large building. There are four, or there are eight long tables going laterally across with an open plane in the middle, which is where you guys are entering from. After that, there's a bit of space with a number of circular tables and chairs set around them. On the left-hand side, there's a large board basically covering the entire left wall with a number of different notices all over it. At the very back of the building, you can see that there's a second level where there are a number of tables set up over there. On the right-hand side, there's a staircase heading upward. The very back, before it goes upstairs, is a full bar with a single exit or a single pathway going from between the stairs and the bar into what looks to be the back area. It is filled with all sorts of different people of races and looks like a lot of different origins here. It is kind of crazy and hectic. Uh, so there is a, an active tavern bar fight going on? 
it appears that they're on uh, the right hand side a number of tables have been pushed aside and a bunch of people are just having a fist fight uh it's what looks to be betting and cheering going on but right. leans his head up and over the crowd and then just starts tapping grayson on the arm over and over again <laughs> You, you uh, kind of try, but there are some people even taller than your neck. You see a number of Goliaths, half orcs, really tall dragonborn, and one human that is in the middle of the fight who is freaking massive. Just like he's shirt off and ripped and fighting and laughing his ass off. The Grayson. very beautiful mustache. Grayson. Grayson. What is the plan? You, you'll never guess who's here. <sighs> Do you remember that pair of drow? The Amakir twins? Um, uh... I'm staring at both of them. <laughs> Is this Grayson, a I'll try and get an angle. Uh, no. So, oh, sorry, was someone else talking? Uh, you guys are start. I like, can start to uh, make your way through uh, the crowd, starting to head in towards the back. Merton is like happily, like a couple of people actually come up and like start, kind of throw an arm around Merton and kind of drag him off. And it's like, oh, I'll be back. See, uh, oh. I'm going this way now. So, sorry. So, Mo, seeing that there is a tavern brawl that looks like it's in good fun going on, he is going to yell, "Locus Tan Magari!" and then like run in and punch somebody. <laughs> <laughs> if, any, if anybody speaks giant, let me know. Uh. Uh, a couple of heads turn, and Flat actually, dash. the guy that you ended up punching happens to be a Goliath who turns, grinning at you. Grinning good or grinning bad? Grinning. Well, grinning he looks happy. Punched. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly what I was going for. It's like a good punch off. I'm into it. Uh, yeah, he uh, grabs you if you let him. Or he's going to try and grab you and toss you. Oh, okay. Are you trying to contest this? Uh, yeah, no. When he goes to grab me, I'll try to, like, break the grasp and then do, like, a little headbutt on the bridge of his nose. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll. Consider what you're trying to either acrobats or athletics against his. Ooh, wow. Those are... Athletics is my better. 20. Okay, he you just barely managed to shove him off before uh, he grabs onto you and tosses you, and then you wanted to try and hit him? Yeah, well, so, like, during the grab, I was going to, like, bring my forearms down to, like, break the grab, and in that, since his arms are going to be pushed down, I'm going to, like, push my forehead into the bridge of his nose. Go ahead and make an unarmed strike attack. Uh, sorry. Am I able? So to that's roll? strength plus your perception, or not perception, your proficiency bonus. Eighteen. Yeah, you hit. Uh, you do three points of damage as you basically headbutt this uh big Goliath and. He kind of looks down at you. He's like, <laughs> oh, "You got some spunk, tiny man." I'm gonna just sit there and be like, "Hi, um, Mo." Oh, why don't you uh, take a crack at the champion? If you uh, you beat him, you get a free night's uh, Mo. You get to stay here for free, basically. Oh, what are the rules? Fists only. 
Oh, okay. Well, basically no magic. Uh, ooh, wait, no magic or fists only? Because that changes everything. Just no magic. Okay. All right. I guess I'll go fight this guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Mo's. This guy's basically gone behind you and then is like starting to warm you up as you see the two other combatants. Or, like, it was only like the two guys having the brawl. And this was just one of the guys cheering him on. But he's basically behind you, like, trying to warm up your muscles from behind, like, giving you the little massage in the back, trying to hype you up. So I assaulted somebody, is what happened. Yeah, basically. Oh, okay. Good to know. Huh. Indeed. Hap happens, you know. Uh, a few moments later, you see the man that's the very strong man with a mustache simply tosses uh, into a number of other guys who manage to catch him and slow him down, but uh, it's definitely appears that he was it's a ring out, and he is not ready to continue. As the, the man then begins to flex, it's like, Ah, oh, that was wonderful! You must always test your strength in helping others and stuff. My mind is just breaking. I can't seem to do the character justice right now. You'll see why in a sec. As he strikes a pose, and you see... Almost like sparks just going. appear around him. <laughs> I know exactly where this character is going. I do not. I do not. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> who's the next challenger? Please, anyone, come. I welcome I, any I, opponents. Oh. Hello, Mo. I am Alex Louis Armstrong. Hold up, welcome. Wait, 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 wait. I have not seen you before. I'm going to, like, make his voice three times as loud while he's saying all this. Haha. -ha. So just, like... Because, like, Mo in this is, like, this is just fun. And so he's, like, super into the, all the theatrics of this guy. So he wants to make him, like, as awesome as possible before this fight. His voice was already booming, but, at the, but now it's even louder. It's like... Well, that's a nice trick, but it's good to meet you, Mo. Mo's gonna like reach a hand. So out you to want shake. to take a? He he reaches out and grabs your hand. Hmm, seems like you were out in the rain. Are you sure you don't want to dry off first before getting into a bout? Maybe have a drink. Oh no! In in my culture, a rogue tar is always the best thing to warm up after a nice rain shower. Fair enough. Then, why not we begin? And he goes to, he shakes your hand and then goes into a, a fighting stance. I will allow you the honors of the first move. Oh, okay. Uh, Mo <laughs> will. <laughs> 17 to hit? Uh, 17 does hit. As you bring your great club down, kind of takes him off guard. He uh, was not expecting the weapon, but he seems to shake it off like, well, I did not see that coming, but I shall oblige you just the same. I was told the only rule was no magic. And that is very fair, though we normally only go fists and punching and whatnot, but that is quite all right. And you see his eyes kind of, kind of like see a spark of fire in his eyes as he gets pumped and goes into a rage. A very honorable and just rage. It's been nice knowing y'all. <laughs> Did somebody just get a match on Tinder? He, he just went into a uh, rage. Maybe. A, uh... <laughs> nice. <laughs> My man! <laughs> he, he just uh, I regret downloading rage. it. He, he just went into a rage, a technique that has been passed down in the Armstrong family for generations. I was getting there, damn it! Come on, man. This is how the Armstrongs got this. angry for generations! <laughs> this is simply our excitedness, as he will make two attacks against you. 
at advantage as he does them recklessly. Oh, wait, no, 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 he can't do reckless. But he will make two attacks against you. I'm sure he can. Yep. Bye, friend. <laughs> and no. All right. <laughs> As he brings one fist down, clocking you right in the face. Oh god, he's got. He down brings the other one up as you just managed to quickly duck backwards, surprised at how quick this very large man is. And you're starting to realize, look at him over a bit more. He is just a normal human, but really big. Like he's standing a, just a bit taller than you, and you're not used to humans being that tall. Yeah, uh, full disclosure, Mo did not expect to win this fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Mo's going to sit there and be like, wow, you're a really good fighter. It's, you know, it's really nice fighting you. Uh, and then he will. Uh, mm, mm. Oh. Uh, he kind of catches your mace in one hand and just kind of tosses it off the side. Why, thank you. This technique has been passed down the Armstrong line for generations. And I shall demonstrate it now. He, yes, he makes two more very strengths. confused. She's tired, so she she's no just one, yes. not understanding anything that's happening right now. Mo basically just walked up, punched a Goliath, and now he's fighting... Well, oh, she very, understands big, that man. part, but like <laughs> usually punching people doesn't like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, I don't think anybody else could have pulled off whatever the hell just happened except Mo. <laughs> uh... She's just accepting it. She's like, okay, this is happening now. Yeah, he looks quite like a boxer. Like he's hopping on both feet at this point. It's like. Come now, show me what you are made of! So, if it's a racial ability, does it count as magic? I'm just gonna say that's up to your discretion. Okay. Uh, so I, I would say no. I would say it's, you know, kind of like being a chameleon. Uh, so yeah. Mo is going to, because he, like, took my mace and threw it away. Just kind of, like, shoved it off. But okay. not actually throwed it, threw it away. Uh, then yeah, then I will, uh, tried the mace again 22 yeah that definitely hits and i will hidden step so mo just goes <gasps> and then is gone and then he'll like circle around clockwise uh to the flank of this guy hmm well i thought we weren't uh, doing magic tonight i was not expecting that oh okay but how so about when he says this? that Oh, no, when he says uh, that, I'll be like, oh, on. I'm sorry, and then pop out. You can pop out on your turn. Okay. As he then crunches his knuckles together, punching the ground. Uh, I need you to make uh, a constitution saving throw as the ground around him begins to erupt with... Well, it just feels like a sonic wave from the blast of his punch. As, yeah, you are immediately knocked back and you take six points of thunder damage. You're still invisible. Must, yeah, so I think you have to make another con save to keep your concentration on the invisibility. Nope, no, Mo doesn't concentrate, remember? Huh. Yeah. I had no idea. My apologies. Mo okay, doesn't concentrate on things. <laughs> yeah, Mo, Mo, Mo I, I don't give him concentration. Skills. How dare you assume he thinks? <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. It's Mo's turn. All right, so Mo, uh, still at, uh, I guess I'll move forward. Still at his uh, flank. I'm going to Great Club. All right, uh, since you're invisible, you roll at advantage. Yeah. Nice. Unfortunately, though, oh. he, you kind of. His, his head just suddenly turns at the last second, and he just, like, backhands the club off and away from him. Ah, that is a very neat trick. Hmm. Mo did drop it, by the way. Like, oh, yeah. As well, invincibility drops as soon as you make an attack. 
Oh, yeah, sorry. No worries. <laughs> but here's a, here's a new one for you. And he will make an unarmed strike and then Furia blows onto you. Wait, is this guy a... He's, he's a monk barbarian. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that was news to me. Uh, so the 24 hits. Sorry. As he gives you, clocks you upside the head again. Mo is looking rough, but he he's maintaining his smile because he knows this is in good fun. He's like, sorry, I didn't realize because like furbolgs can naturally go. Oh, hold on, and he's gonna like mid sentence. He's gonna swing his great club. <laughs> <laughs> Furball as it cracks down on him. Go invisible. Ah, oh, that's quite all right. It's always good to break in the new folks. It's good to learn the rules as you go. And here's another one for you. As he makes oh, two more strikes. Lovely. That misses and misses. Dio. As you're just gonna. Parrying off his blows. And? Uh, that hits. By the way, who's in charge? I would love to inquire about joining your organization. Uh, that would be Sybil over at the bar. She's the owner of the establishment. And, and so as he says over at the bar, Mo will turn and look. Over at the bar. <laughs> uh, the sudden turn throws him off as he didn't expect you to suddenly look over that way. Like, huh. And he makes a second attack. Apparently he misses again. Uh, Mo will be like, oh, thanks. I'll make sure to go talk to her before I uh, leave or go to bed tonight. Have you Much advised. Me? No, I have not heard of Wazel as you club him in the head, but he still appears to be... Like, a bit of blood kind of starts to come down the side of his face, but he's still gritting through all of it. I have not heard of Wazel. Who is this person? And he... Well, he's a talking squirrel. That second one hits. He's a talk. Oh, and... Uh, so he's a talking <laughs> squirrel? <laughs> Gets knocked out. <laughs> uh, as Armstrong basically does a sure you can and uppercuts you, and you kind of go flying. And then it looks very similar to how the last guy went out, and the number of the people around catch you in the air. Uh, some cheers are heard, some sighs of, ah, oh, damn it. I thought that he would finally get taken. Ah, oh, damn. Oh, uh, people bet on me. They were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they did. Grayson will come on over and uh, put a hand on you and put his healing hands into you, so you get four health back. And you're suddenly conscious in the arms of strangers. You hear the Goliath that uh, you had originally punched kind of in cursing. Ah, damn it. A stranger. <laughs> I thought I finally uh, had one there. <laughs> Mo is going to... Uh, walk up to Armstrong and like do like a uh, like a he p pounds over his heart twice as a sign of respect uh, and then he's going to be like I would like to buy this man a beer but I gave all no, my no. to the town guard <laughs> uh, as you say that he's like he puts up a hand and kind of shows you no I am the one who buys drinks around here you are drinking on me tonight I am the you one put up a good house. fight my friend well, thank you. Wazel's more than a talking squirrel. He's a whole ass god, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> quote, he's a whole ass god. <laughs> End quote. But Anyways, the go, get... <laughs> go get a drink. I will tell Sybil it is all on me. So no worries, my friend. And excuse me, as it seems I have another challenger. 
But do enjoy your night. I will see you later. Have a good and night. Gives, he goes and then gives you a big old hug. I reciprocate of... fully. All right, we're doing a strength check on this. Whose hug is harder? <laughs> yes. Even oh, in his, fuck yeah. even in his rage, <laughs> or his like happy rage, you still manage to kind of out hug him, and he gives you another good look and a clap on the back. Ah, I like you, sir. I got more excited for that than I should have. Your name is drawn <laughs> down on some line. Now, excuse me, as he goes back to what looks to be a new challenge you're getting ready to uh, psych himself up to fight Armstrong. While this is going on, what's everybody else up to? Uh, I'm looking for whoever is in charge of lodging, and I have the death dog head. <laughs> just with you? <laughs> yeah, just with me. I didn't want to risk it leaving real. it in the rain. Just plop it down on the counter. <laughs> There are two death dog heads. It's a two-headed creature. Two for one so special. Oh, shit. All right. Well, I guess I got two then. <laughs> <laughs> Just one Flat. in each arm. Flat is making his way through the crowd. He went to find those two drow. All right. We'll start uh, with, uh, <laughs> with the one with the death dog heads. As you make your way to the bar, it seems to be fairly crowded, but only uh, one person in the bar back appears to be uh, working at all. Uh, she appears to be uh, a halfling. And she, uh, looking her over, she looks to be in like fairly common tavern robes. Or like, not dr robes, but like dress. But she also appears to be missing a hand. There's just a little metal stub covering it. And she eventually gets down to you. It's like, Oi, what are you drinking? Uh, n not to drink. Um, I was wondering how would I go about uh, acquiring lodging? You'd be talking to me then. Name's Sybil. Are you new then? Uh, new to town, we came in with, uh, Martin, and pleased to meet you, I'm Amavasia. Sybil. Ah, uh, so that, uh, Pipsqueak didn't, uh, get himself killed. Damn, I owe some money. Anyways, why'd you bring those two rotting things in here? She gestures to the heads. I uh, wanted to study them and didn't want to risk them rotting in the rain. Mm, don't you have a bag to hold them in or something? Sticking up the place. You get enough monster beasties parts at least coming through here. Uh, she just kind of sighs and starts to rub her eyes. Uh, whatever. Uh, my apologies. What can I do for you? And she appears to be... Like, Give me an insight check. Uh, and where is the tab that has my sheet? Under uh, PCs. Oh, I, I have it open in a, a different window, so I had to click through the window. Um, you said insight? Yeah. Uh, and so I gotta take the lower, so 7 plus 2, 9. She's giving you a genuine smile. And she's not forcing it at all. Cool. So what can I do for you? I just need a room, please. Sure thing. Mm, since you're not part of the guild, it's about a silver a night. Already, and we'll uh, shuffle the heads carefully uh, and take out a uh, silver. 
Uh, we'll actually take it through silver. Gives first. it a quick look over. All right. Uh, here's a key, and she tosses you a key. It's for two rooms. Sorry, I was, I was trying to get two rooms. Two rooms. My brain so isn't here. Silver each. <laughs> yeah, and hands the two silver. Hmm. Pockets it. Here are the two keys. Rooms are upstairs. Thank you very and you much. You look down at them, and they have little numbers engraved onto the key. Fancy. Uh, and I'll head back to Yasna. She is very grateful. Uh, where's where'd the accent go? Oh, uh, uh, so got us a room. Uh, also got one for the tall, sleepy new friend Mo. Uh, though it might be a bit difficult to get over to him. <laughs> As you look over, the two of you look over and you see him go flying in the air. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Perhaps a bit easier than we thought at first. Let's go see if he's alright. Alright. All right. While the two of you head over, Platt, you're you spot the drow you're looking for, no problem. They appear to be upstairs drinking, alone. They're still like looking over everything, but they just appear to be on their own upstairs, at their own table. Platt's gonna make his way up to them. Uh, they acknowledge you. <laughs> yeah, I... They're... Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, I would have preferred you, you, you send me something beforehand. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I, I'm got this. Don't worry, you can move on to someone else. Alright, Platt's off doing his own thing with other people. Everyone else is converging around Mo currently, who Grayson has brought back from unconsciousness, except for Orin, what are you up to during this crazy place? Uh, Orin just found a corner and was is watching the room. Alright, uh, as soon as you sit down, uh, a, a gold-scaled dragonborn sits on the other side across from you. Well, hello there, sir. Are you new? I don't believe I have seen you here before. My name is Brex. It is a pleasure to meet you. And he extends his hand out to you. Orin shakes his hand. Like, shakes his hand, like, once, and then, like, <laughs> short and grumpy, not, like, Trying to offend anyone, but not trying terribly hard not to either. Oh, totally fair. He doesn't appear to notice this at all. Hmm. I have not seen uh, one of a gnome of your stature before or in a long time. <laughs> hmm. You uh, are you by chance a practitioner of the arcane? I couldn't help but uh, notice the book at your side there. Uh, I, too, am a practitioner of uh, the Mystic Arts. Uh, I went to uh, the Red Major check. School. Go ahead. Yeah, what? Uh, uh, Non-natural 20. He appears to be telling the truth, and he seems genuinely excited to be talking with you. Okay. Um... Or at least that you. <laughs> Accurate. Um, <laughs> did I forget which of the um, 
What, I'm sorry, which which school did he say he went to? I was about to say that before... Uh... Oh, sorry. Uh, before you... Get... No worries, no worries. Uh, I was at the Red Major School at Shosendi. Uh, I'm, I graduated a few years ago now. Um, you look quite familiar, but I can't quite place it. Were you perhaps there before? Was that... I've, I'm sorry, I forget if we said, was that the school that I went to? I forget which school you went to off the top of okay. my head as well. But he will continue to prattle and begin asking you questions on your or your personal opinions on uh, these specific theorems that I have been uh, looking over and uh, potential past events that have happened for an arcane nature and will continue to go on and on. Are, and are on. any of his theories interesting at all, or are they really just like undergrad stuff? Uh, he has. He starts to talk about one about uh, portals to separate worlds and dimensions, but give me give me an Arcana check. I'm so excited okay. that he picked the only person in our party that wouldn't politely excuse himself to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> that's accurate. Uh, uh, that's... Actually, I'm going to use luck on that. Oh! Cool, cool. Nat 20. Uh, 27. Do you think the idea that he's talking about could have merit? But the way he goes about talking about it He's coming from a completely, like, wrong academic angle to approach the subject. Oh, sorry, hiccups. Having having long years as a teacher, I will kind of just instinctively start to correct, like, his argument. Like, no, 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 you, you, you want to go at it from this angle. Just like, this is the wrong... You're, you're doing this wrong. It it needs to. I can't let this pass. Kind of. He immediately pulls out a book and begins writing, and then bouncing questions and ideas right back out, like lightning fast. Like you've had, you've dealt with uh, eager students before. This guy's like beyond eager and excited, and just won't shut up. Do I do I see a spell book on him? Uh, give me a perception check. Not terrible, fifteen. You kind of look him over. He does not appear to have a book on him, other than the book that he's currently writing in. Yeah. But he continues to ponder and pester you, even. After you finish explaining things, he then moves on to another topic and continues to poke and prod. And just. Uh, at some point, I will eventually interject, probably just completely baldly, just like no, no tact involved, but um, ask if uh, he's a wizard or uh, some other kind of uh, magic user. Uh, no, I uh, my magic comes uh, from within, and with the uh, he seems to bolster her up with uh, some pride. Comes from within, and uh, with great pride comes from uh, my ancestral bloodline. Uh, you see, I'm actually part royalty from Alatira, and uh, our nature has always had uh, blood in our veins. So, magic basically takes an extra long time to explain that he's a sorcerer, like. Whenever you ask him anything, and then they have to only take like a few words, he extends it into like a full novel. I'm very sad that I don't have any second level spell slots left, so I can just suggest that he go away. <laughs> well, Orn is trapped in his own personal hell with this uh, this person. Uh, I mean, it's, you guys... <laughs> it's it's half hell, but then like. He actually has someone to talk magic with, which was good for, like, a, a half an hour, maybe? 
Yeah, he... He'd just keep talking with you, just... Period. Like, even after a half hour, he seems very eager and excited to be talking with somebody who uses the arcane and is new. So, what are your ideas on the, uh... Well, I'm not sure what many other people call it, but I like to call it the... Destruction of magic in uh, the many millennia ago that uh, during uh, the fall of Triathel and uh, the forming of uh, the Black Barrow. And uh, what are, also, what do you think of the, the possible age reduction effects that uh, that magical uh, explosion caused in the current races and how that uh, affects our current political landscape and so on and so forth? <laughs> I'll ask if he's familiar with a uh, a gnome uh, named Tana. Hmm. Um, also a wizard. Tana. Tana. No, I don't believe so. If uh, they have come through here, they, or Sanaya, they have not come through this tavern, as far as I know. Uh, a few moments later, as he continues to explain how it's almost impossible for him to avoid any or any magic user to not escape his myths, uh, an elf plops down next to him and, oh, Brex, it's so good to see you. Um, yeah, Sybil was asking for you. Um, she needs some help deciphering some scroll that someone brought in. It's like his eyes kind of wide. Oh, that would be wonderful. Excuse me, good sir. I did not catch your name. What was your name again? And you never will. <laughs> <laughs> and this uh, is like after an hour of talking. <laughs> Saved by the elf. Um, <laughs> That's perfect. Listen, all I'm saying is it's another really eccentric dragonborn with theories on the arcane that are potentially morally ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is... <laughs> We start killing. We need to bring him to the velvet room and have him get shunted out of existence. <laughs> no, 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 guys, guys, we need to find another baby dragon. <laughs> <laughs> baby dragon. They're exactly how we get from one dimension to the other. I'll show you. That would be fascinating. Oh my god, I would love to see one of those. He's currently running off to see whatever after he's still waiting on Orin for his name. Sorry. After he didn't get <laughs> his name. Yeah, he'll just say Orin so that he will go away. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Orin. It has been a fantastic Rex. She's asking for you. Ah, excuse me. And he quickly hurries off. You, the elf kind of turns to you. You should probably leave this specific area at least. Maybe hide amongst the earlier idiots around here, he will be back. And if he sees you again, he will chat you off to no end. He'll, he'll just kind of make a hand motion as in, like, too late for that. No. But, uh, and then move up to the bar and request a room. As you're heading off, he... Uh, give me another perception check. Okay. Uh, that's not great. I'm going to use my last luck on that. Cool. Um, aha! Non-natural 20 again. All right. Uh, you do notice on uh, the elf, like, you see, he kind of, he has a tankard in one hand, and, like, he's kind of draped in a kind of cloakish robe thing. But you notice he's actually missing his other arm. And you see on his hip what looks to be... a, You notice some arcane sigils on the uh, kind of pouch on his uh, leg. It looks like a number of cards. He also has a rapier on his other hip. And given your advanced age and arcane knowledge... You know that spell books come in a number of different shapes and forms. Ah. I'm pretty sure this guy is a wizard as well. But he 
Kurt sees you eyeing him and he gives you a smile and a nod and raises a tanker to you and he gets up and hurley Lee Le- uh, enters into the rest of the crowd to avoid uh, Rex. I will I will quickly before he gets too far uh, ask his name. <clears throat> ah, my apologies. The name's Varys. Pleasure to meet you, Orn. And he gives you uh, a nice little bow. He'll he'll bow back. Uh, and say, maybe we can talk some other time. He just kind of shrugs. Eh, if you find me around here, normally I'm too busy. I'm really in town. Normally stuck up in some ruins. <laughs> Adios. And he heads off into a crowd and he's greeted by a number of other gentlemen. But uh, you head up to the bar and the halfling eventually gets over to you and uh, another new one. Uh, who, who is a halfling behind the bar? Yeah. Is it? Oh, okay, good. So I might actually be visible. Oh yeah, she notices you and... Oh my god, why didn't you... Are you part of a larger party that just came in tonight? Yes. Why didn't you all come in at the same time? I'm taking you're gonna want a room. Yep. Alright. Silver for the night. Bops it on the counter. Tosses you a key. Nods. Turns away. Goes upstairs. Fair enough. Or actually uh, stops by and uh, just passes by and tells Grayson I'm in room 7. Do I know how large the rooms are? You have not. You didn't ask how large they were and you haven't been up there yet. Okay. Uh, nah, he doesn't care. He's small enough. It's a, uh, men room seven. Uh, and, well, how would he say this? Just, just, uh, no, okay. He'll just say, we're in room seven, and then head upstairs. And he passes that on to Grayson, you said? Yep. All right, cool. Grayson probably just sitting down somewhere tired just gives you a thankful nod. Like, all right. Oh, you yeah. head up. The upstairs area goes back a little bit, but there's only like two rows of the round tables with chairs around them. In the, the very back in the middle there up here, or not the very middle, uh, Halfway between, basically, there's two corridors up there. It appears that uh, the rooms are on uh, the leftmost corridor. You head back and you find your room fairly easily. Stepping inside, you got a window which looks out onto uh, the Plith River. The storm is still going, but it's definitely calmed down as you can hear it through the shutters. Inside, there appears to be a table, a chair, and a single bed with a trunk at the end of it. Looking back, the locks appear to be fairly strong on these doors. I will take ten minutes to cast alarm, take a blanket from the bed, and crawl into the trunk. (laughs) Alright, pulling an arm of us, yeah. Alright. You said there was only one bed, right? Yep, one yep. bed with a yep. trunk at the end. All right, jumping over to Yasna, Amavasya, and Mo, and I think Grayson as well. Mm-hmm. What are you guys up to now that Mo is conscious and he's having his drink spot for him? You guys, you guys are are you're great. I I really like you guys. Um, plus he just like has like an eyebrow twitch 
and they realize, ah, I'm gonna be one of those. <laughs> and just kind of like heads over, pats him on the shoulder. Yes, we we like you too. Hey Mo, we've yeah. gotten you a room. So oh. when you're ready to sleep, uh, let me know and and we'll show you where it is. I uh, I am ready whenever you are ready. Oh wait, I need to talk to the sin 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 some something. Uh, the, the, that's actually not me in character saying that. That is me as a player trying to oh, remember her Sybil. name. Sybil. Yeah. Yeah. Sybil. I need to talk to Sybil about becoming a mercenary before I go to bed, and then I am all set. All right. Well, she's at the bar, so let's head. Oh wait, are we already at the bar because he has drinks? Or is he, like, at a you table? guys could have gotten a drink wherever. <laughs> you could be at a table at one of the long tables, one of the round tables, or up at the bar. Where where would you guys want to be? Mo would probably be. I don't know how to explain this. Uh, do you know when you see somebody at a bar that's just like at that awkward phase of drunk and they're just standing in a very inconvenient place? <laughs> yeah, 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 I got you. <laughs> yeah. You're kind of uh, walking the stairs, heading upstairs at this point, then. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's perfect. Because it seems like it's a calmer crowd upstairs, and downstairs is much more rowdy. So, yeah, Mo, Mo is just standing at the most inconvenient place, uh, and probably saying, Hello, I am Mo to every, like, passing patron. Uh, but then at uh, Amavazia coming up and guiding me to Sybil, uh, Mo would walk up to Sybil and be like, "Hello, I'm." I was about to say Amavazia. I am Mo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Mo is drunk. Do you have any business with me? Well, or do we need I... to throw you out or throw some water on your face? I do like water, but I am here to inquire because I came with another mercenary uh, whose name Mo would remember, but Nelson was a part oh, you're, of You came in with Martin. Yes. Uh, Martin said to talk to you about inquiring about how to become a mercenary. Well, it's not that hard. Just gonna sign a form, make a magic bond, and bada bing, bada boom, you're part of the Bronze Eagles. All right. Uh, I do have to say, I have an undying pact to weed out corruption in most of civilization. If that would be a problem, then I will gladly not sign. She just got drugs. Shouldn't be a problem with us. Perfect, then I will sign Anyone right now. Anyone who caught with has to deal with me. And I've Anybody? dealt with plenty of people. Okay, I will sign right now then. You'll have to do it when you're sober and get three people in the guild already to vouch for you. Ah, uh, I need to make one more friend in the guild. Uh, he's gonna like turn around and be like, You, you sir, are you in the guild? <laughs> uh, <laughs> a passing half elf just kind of looks around and points at himself. Yeah, you. Uh, you mean me? Yes. Uh, no, this just this this is just like the best bar in town. So ah, okay. How about you, no. sir? Are you in the guild? And uh, he will like walk into the crowd, and be like, "Sir, are you in the guild?" <laughs> and. Uh... <laughs> Similar, so going back to like <laughs> drunk examples, you know how like when you're at a bar sometimes and you just talk to a stranger and you're like, wow, this dude's like cool as hell. Mo's going to try to make that kind of friend tonight. Uh, you start uh, wandering around and those of you who were with Mo up at the bar see Sybil gesture to uh, gold scale dragonborn and then you see her point over to Mo. And he looks excited and quickly heads over. And those of you behind just see him, or see Sybil, just kind of 
with an evil grin on her face. <laughs> Damn. Hello. A moment later. I'm... Hello, I am Brex, and you are this Mo fellow I have heard so much about. Is that true? Yes. Is well, it it's true good that you to are meet Brex? you. Yes, I am Brex. Well, uh, I'm Mo. I heard you. I have never seen uh, one of your kind before. You are, um, how do they say, a uh, furbog. Is that correct? Yes, and you are, how they say, alive. Yes, I am alive. Uh, very sure of you to notice this. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am a dragonborn. And I heard also that you could turn invisible. Is that true? Do you, are you a practitioner of the arcane arts as well? No. I follow the god Wazel. Hmm. I have not heard of this god Wazel. And he pulls out a book and kind of pulls you off to sit down at a table and we'll, we'll start asking be... you a thousand and one questions about uh, Wazel. Uh, so. He so uh, uh, as he's asking, I'll be like, "You're in the guild, right?" Yes, I am. Uh, I am a new member of the guild. Perfect. I joined. I... You how long? It's been uh, quite a while. How many moons? How many moons? More and than two. You'll basically hum and haw for a while, and eventually three. give you. He's basically been in the guild for about a year. So, as he's humming and hawing for a while, Mo will just be sitting there and be like, more than four? More than five? No, no, not quite four. Oh, no, it's been much longer than five. More yeah. than six? Basically, he'll be answering all of your questions as he continues to think, and then eventually get to he's been in there for a year. Uh, okay, and so Mo will then be like, I heard that people in civilization like to make deals, so I will answer your questions if tomorrow, when I am sober, you vouch for me to join the guild. Sure, not a problem, as long as you allow me to ask you uh, more questions when you become a part of our uh, magnificent guild here. That sounds lovely. Ah, excellent, and he will go back to questioning everything and whenever you bring up a story he will ask for more and more details yes yeah, so, and be writing everything down so remember how mo depth. talked to igor yep basically that i feel like this is just going to be like fuel thrown into fire thrown into fuel thrown into fire kind of thing <laughs> basically the more uh, stories you tell the more questions he'll ask yeah so I, I assume that Am Amavazia and uh, Yasna are probably going to just get annoyed and walk away at some point. But if not, that's on them. But it's going to be a long time. Speaking of which, Black Burrow, we are going to find out the secrets it holds. We are going to come back. Mo is still in the same chair, <laughs> telling the same dragonborn stories. <laughs> Yeah, I, I could see that. Speaking of Amavasi, Yasna, and Grayson, what are you three up to after you saw Sybil sick this dragonborn on your friend? <laughs> we'll just kind of like turn to Sybil and nod, but also turn back and like pinch like whatever the arc of my cat shaped nose is. I think it's still the bridge. <sighs> the bridge, yeah, okay. <laughs> like the, for the smell of your of your dogs <laughs> no is, is it wise to leave him here probably not uh, no. I'm not I had no idea he either. had any intention of becoming a mercenary I wonder how much Neither of that is the I. shrinking It didn't strike me as the type. Well, I'm old and tired. I'm going to go lay down for a little while. Line of the whole group. <laughs> uh, 
Amavasi is gonna try to interject and, and fetch uh, Mo. Uh, Mo would probably let him interject. Them, let them interject. Uh, M Mo, uh, it, it's quite late. We should probably head to our rooms now since we have an early morning. Also, I'm Amavasia. Pleased to meet you. And we'll uh, not extend a paw, but we'll nod. <laughs> Oh my, I haven't, I haven't met a tabaxi before either. Please sit down. I have many questions to ask about uh, the homeland. And I've never been to uh, the Dash myself, but it seems like a very interesting place. And so I'm about please to sit, sacrifice please. to the ceaseless mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Trust me, I do appreciate your curiosity. It is very late and we've been traveling a very long time. Uh, we very much need to rest for now. Are it you has sure? been a pleasure to answer your questions, but I must go with the cat. Might be a god. I don't know yet. <laughs> hmm. Is th that might be possible. Excuse me, uh, Alavasia, are you in fact a god? Do you have any uh, <laughs> abilities that uh, have suddenly arisen? Is it possible for you to grant powers or perhaps miracles? And he will begin to rapid fire at you now. As I'm body gesturing Mo to keep walking towards the stairs, I will just Mo. turn back and look at uh, Brex and just kind of wink before heading off. <laughs> no, no, you cannot! And he, like, please, please express. And he's, like, following you with a journal, constantly writing things, like, just following you guys, asking no. questions. <laughs> that was the best. Please, you response. must explain. Don't leave me hanging. This this is, could be a very interesting discovery. Uh, uh, please, uh, could it add to the entire pantheon of the hundred gods, or maybe you are perhaps the one god, or. Oh. And, <laughs> You <laughs> will keep going. Oh, I'm gonna get round I'm and about to like a cold. <laughs> Sorry, one at a time. <laughs> what? Are you, how are you reacting to this? Just staring and blinking. Uh, no, I'm. I'm gonna continue to walk and, like, push Mo into Mo's room. And then we'll... We'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, hand, we'll hand Mo the key as I push him into the room and then shut the door behind me. A smile, then, at Brex. Good night. Let's speak again later. And we'll oh. quickly shove myself into the room. <laughs> Oh, very well. And you can hear it muffled through the door. I will be downstairs early in the morning to hear the results of uh, our conversation so we can speak at it at further and at much length and so I can get a greater understanding. And basically he goes on and is like basically saying he will be downstairs tomorrow for the next like five hey, minutes. Yasta kind of so. peeks her head out of her room and looks over at this like other dragonborn. And it's just like you do realize that there are people who are attempting to sleep, right? Oh, you guys know we're in the same room, so I would have uh. like panically like shoved <laughs> myself in. <laughs> As the two of you look around, then realize you're in a single room. Yes, that's my so like one bed and one box. <laughs> Mo doesn't need a bed. That's fine. You lay down on the floor. I'm just thinking like, almost it throws you into the room, and you're just kind of teetering there. And then you like fall face first onto the floor and just start snoozing. Yep, that's it. <laughs> oh, uh, but that... before he like actually passes out, he's gonna mutter, "Yasna, don't forget to remind me to ask you about your your necklace." And then he'll pass out. Yeah, only you heard that as you were in your own room. And you begin to have your sleep. Uh, Grayson, did you go up to your room or are you still downstairs enjoying the night? 
Uh, as everyone heads off, he'd probably get up and go look for Platt. Where did that total get off to? Platt is at the second floor, leaning over the railing. So you could probably see him, and he's having an at-length conversation with the pair of drow that he mentioned before. Hmm. Uh, the entire time he's been talking to them, the male drow has gone from reluctant listening to the conversation to invested to waving his hand off the flat and the female has just been drinking like a fiend uh, Grayson will make his way on up as you come up you watch as the male elf kind of just rolls his eyes nods his head and then points at the woman and Platt looks at him, looks at her, nods his head puts in puts money in the hand of female elf and nods his head and she nods at him Platt get introduce me you remember and before he can speak I remember you Grayson and stepping forward towards you is a very pale-skinned drow with half of her head shaved on the side. Very long white hair on the other side. In, like, ragged, uh, ragged robes. <laughs> Grayson will stand there, nodding slowly. Uh, it is very, like, as if he very much recognizes them. Uh, Platt knows this as Grayson's, uh, like, what the, who the fuck are you got to nod. <laughs> She's like, hmm, yep, that's right. We met back then at that thing. Mm -hmm. Platt will just sigh. Uh, they're the Amakias, Larnell and Lena. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lino! Mm -hmm. like... See you again, Grayson. Good to see you as well. Find yourself anything interesting? You know, I always do. Especially when I've got this one was stuck with me. And he'll gesture at Platt. Not for long, I'm taking him off your hands. <laughs> Grayson will kind of furrow his brow. Like, Taking him. How so? You know the death dog? Blat the bullet. Of them wogs. Mm. I shouldn't be there. It's high time I pick back my professional monster. <laughs> You always did prefer that over being a courier. Hmm, well. There's too many, too small place. Not right. Something's going on. My male and I are going to find out what. Hmm. Ain't leaving you empty handed. I purchased service of one of the esteemed Amakia. Pats the back of the. A uh, female who stumbles forward, looking very drunk. Hi, 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 I'm coming. Mm. Help. That certainly seems what they'll be. She staggers over to you, Grayson. Puts a hand on your on your shoulder and leans forward like she's going to vomit. He leans back in accordance, like. Mm. She grabs you, squeezes your shoulder, and stands up completely sober. Mm. I'm sorry. What was that comment? <clears throat> Great help. Platt really knows how to pick him. Please let me go. She lets you go. <laughs> ah. 
he'll like stretch his shoulder and hear like. <laughs> <laughs> your friend said you needed more of a uh, upfront personality for your little group. Ah, uh, we do. Sad, it's okay. It's been a while. We can catch up. And she pats you on the shoulder. I'm going to get to sleep and wait for the old folk to wake up. Hmm. Oh. It'll be good to have you with us, then. Oh. Make sure to let the others know. I don't think they'd have any problem, but if there's a problem, I can smooth it over. And he'll kind of wave a hand. The other guys have to, uh, in still confidence. Uh, we'll go with that, because I don't know what phrase I'm going for right now. <laughs> but we'll walk over and give you a hug. <laughs> and I'll return it, and a little filly kind of appears between them and, like, wraps around. Uh, the back of the back of Platt's neck kind of coming to like so her face is in his like <gasps> I'm leaving Platt no just for a bit Philly gotta go hunt I know head down to Grayson's store and wait for him I swear if I have to come back up north to find you can you fuck something up Grayson it will not be pretty <laughs> I'll do my best not to. Wouldn't want your wrath. Besides, anything happens to me. I think we'll not both know. I'll be with the wife. It's fine. <laughs> mm. Grayson just looks kind of sternly at you. Narrowed eyes, like... Mm. Yeah. And he reaches into his shell and he pulls out the, uh, the letters the group is meant to deliver. Oh yeah, those probably gonna help. You know, take them. Oh, guess this is it then. I'll be around. Get some sleep, Grayson. You're gonna need it in the morning. This place is rough. <clears throat> You're gonna hang around to have breakfast with us? Nah, you know we won't about us. <laughs> Never were good at them. That's why we never say him. Pats you on, he pats you on the arm. We'll go dying. We'll come get you in hell. <laughs> Same goes for you. Drop. Lionel. Start heading downstairs and start heading for the door. He'll kind of turn and watch him for a bit, or eventually turn and back to the other drow. Just look her up and down a bit. Like, well, suppose I'm stuck with you now. She laughs a bit and throws your wineskin. Uh, he will probably barely catch it because he is exhausted. And take a swig from it. Oh, uh, it's a special bed. blend. Help you sleep tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> I can tell. It's actually really good. She's proficient in brewing. Oh. Fan well, if, anybody tells, if anybody ever gives you a drink and says something to help you sleep, you probably shouldn't take it. <laughs> uh, did the roll 20 just clear out for anyone else? I, yeah. Yes, yes, it did. Odd. Oh, yeah, look at that. Did you guys hear at least the uh, kind of sappy, all... sad music for Platt leaving? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. It was still Witcher music for me. Oh, I switched it over to uh, some sad music. I, I heard the sad music. Thing. It was it was strong. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, is this actually like player leaving, or no? Player no, no. realizing that character not good for campaign need new character not enjoying. Okay, yeah, I was like, oh. yeah, this was the music that was playing 
as Platt was leaving. Oh, I like it. It's <laughs> been a while, Grayson. I know we haven't caught up in, what, 20 years now? I guess I'll kind of shrug. Uh, I don't usually keep track anymore. Fair. You knew my brother more than you knew me. I'm getting yeah. stuck in Platt's accent. Oh, God. Let's <laughs> <laughs> switch over. New character, new voice. <laughs> new voice, who does? <laughs> I was a kid, and y'all were uh, going around raising hell. I vaguely remember him mentioning a kid sister, but. He still talks about you occasionally. Hmm. I tend to leave an impression. Well, you left an impact. He mm. still has the scar. <clears throat> well, better, better a scar than what it was. <clears throat> mm. That's fault, not mine. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Well, it'll be great to catch up with you, Alina, but we've had a really long day and I really ought to get to sleep. So I've heard. Go on. We'll be down here in the morning. Just, you know, don't leave without us. <laughs> I'll be meditating. I'm sure by morning come. Mm. Well, good night then. Good night. Grayson will head off to room seven? Yes. Yes. And you get in there, the bed is empty, but you take a quick peek and you see Orn's sleeping form. Well, depends. Orange, do you wake up when the alarm sounds? Uh, the alarm doesn't sound when he walks into the room. Um, okay. But, can you set it uh, to friendly or whatever? Yeah, yeah, you can set it so Ooh. it doesn't go off for certain people. Cool, um, cool, cool. And you you don't see Orin because he's in the uh, the chest, but Moira is lying on top of it, so it's pretty obvious. Hmm. Oh, did he close the lid? <laughs> You quickly make sure that uh, the chest isn't locked, and thankfully the lock didn't accidentally activate. Yeah, Grayson will make sure there's, like, enough of a gap where there's still air getting in. <laughs> it's use of a knock spell. <laughs> Unlocking Smart. the chest, you lock yourself in and sleep. <laughs> First of all, there's an arcing lock on the chest as he's asleep and then steals Orn. <laughs> That's so fucked. <laughs> Yes, please, please don't take them. <laughs> oh yeah, Alvarosia is in a chest too. Two for one special. I'm in a different room. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of you all have your sleep. Uh, oh, before. How do you say your there. new character's name, Platt? Lena. Lena, and I'm going to officially move Platt's character into the MIA. PC's list. He took his cart. Lies. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are now down to zero carts. Grayson is too tired to process that and we'll have to piece that reality in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you all drift off to sleep or your trance. Oh, before Grayson goes to sleep, he mm -hmm. is going to commune with Leonor. Alright, he can begin speaking. Yeah, he'll... If it, unless it's a PM thing. Nah, I mean, he'll reach out and just kind of start talking about the day. And just, you know, like, oh my god, these things called bullets. 
destroyed my cart and ate lucky. I mean, to slug through the rain for hours, and then you know, just just keep telling everything that's been happening since they last spoke. <laughs> Despite being in a locked room in a building, you feel a slight gentle breeze just kind of flow through, and you smell the smells of harvest, as if she's commiserating your. <laughs> sad events he smiles and is very appreciative just kind of sits and soaks it in what he can <laughs> <laughs> and unless there's anything else from anyone you all drift off to your rests in the morning you all wake in your assorted rooms so I'm going to be a bit stiff from sleeping in boxes, but nothing too crazy. I think a bit of stretching doesn't fix. The cat is used to. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, you actually wake up to a strange sound. It sounds like a hammer hammering iron. But like, it didn't, like a black like, house. like, does it sound like it's like in the hallway, or does it like sound like like it's it's further out? It sounds like it's fairly close, but like not in the hallway. Okay. Uh, can I? Um, I have to pull up my sheet. Sorry, one second. He's uh, all good. Right off the bat, can I? cast message to uh, Grayson. Uh, you take a few tries to try and point in the right direction, but eventually, after you message a few random people, and you get a few, oh, what? what? Who is this? What? What is going on? You, you eventually get Grayson. Hmm. Uh, who is this? <laughs> Wait, no, message just like 25 words, 25 back, right? That's no, that's sending. That's what I'm looking at. Oh, Stop. okay, yeah. Uh, uh, is there any way you could uh, allow me to borrow your alchemy kit? Uh, I don't know if I can leave the room this morning because of breath. Because of what? And, and, and we'll recast again. Uh, the very enthusiastic dragonborn that thinks I'm a god. Possibly. <laughs> ah, that is a problem. Yes, you can borrow it. I'll bring it over. Thank you. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is not the first NPC that I've been in a campaign with. That has scared someone with their voice. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking gnome. That fucking gnome. Manibus. <laughs> problems. Manibus. Bims. <laughs> but, uh. What's the minute later? Grayson's at your door. With, uh, the alchemy kit. <laughs> We'll quickly let them in. <laughs> Take a quick in. peek around, and there's no Brex. We'll set it Just down. Like... Very tired. Oh, Vasya, it was Here your you fault. Go. Yeah, you're no. None of you are exhausted anymore. Oh, thank goodness! I have normal rolls. I'm so happy. Grayson is tired, no matter what. When he hasn't had his coffee. <laughs> And the one who makes his coffee is now gone. Oh no! He's not gonna make his own coffee! Fuck! <laughs> Proficient with brewer's kit. <laughs> They're not here. <laughs> I solved this problem already. <laughs> 
Thinking is this game just going to devolve into... We, you guys are just like going to open a Starbucks or something in this medieval yes. world? <laughs> Grayson's already started with his shop. Now they just need to open a mega chain. <laughs> they just uh, get franchise going. Franchising time. <laughs> oh, this alchemy kit. We'll kind of set it down. Just look at Amavasi like, don't break it. What are you attempting to make now? Uh, that's a good question. Goals are no good, idea. yes. You should have something set in mind first. Uh, given that they have a venomous bite, I'm assuming a poison? It would be still a venom, technically. Y yes. Fair, and we'll like, quickly but, but jot a note. D &D a poison. <laughs> you can smell of coffee certainly you try. <laughs> Isn't it a disease? <laughs> from these heads? Is it one? Yes. And... Yes, it is a disease from what Platt told you the day before. Yes. Grayson, did you say anything as you were taking the uh, uh, alchemy kit out of the room? Oh, yeah. Uh, if Oren was out, up and awake, Grayson probably would have been like, get it out of us, yeah, the alchemy kit, and then left. <laughs> uh, he would have followed, guessing that she's going to mess with those heads. They. Yeah. <laughs> what will we'll swiftly let Oren in? Uh, someone who is a proprietor of alchemy. Let me let you know. Smell grows stronger. <laughs> let me finish this quickly. <laughs> don't break my set. Don't mess around with things you don't understand. That's how I broke my last kit. Or the kit before the last one, before the last one. Grayson like starts think like thinking. And like is counting on his fingers on like multiple alchemy kits and like mouthing to him, mouthing to himself like, wait, no, that was when I dropped it off the cart. That was when Platt sat on it. That was when, <laughs> and then <it> just <laughs> goes for a little bit, and he's like, besides the point, <clears throat> don't break it. And then he's going to hurriedly head out the door and follow the smell of coffee. Lynn oh, is waiting at the end of the hallway and just hands you a small cup. <laughs> he is very confused initially. Like, how did... Why did... Mm. It is aggressively small cup. <laughs> <laughs> how did... Why did... Thank you. Is there more? Start with one. Platt told me. He gave me a warning. I was prepared. Grayson just nods and takes a sip. Like it's straight espresso. <laughs> just it's liquid ooh. caffeine. He just keeps nodding as he keeps sipping, and probably turns around to head back to the room. Stops, waves. Like, come on, I'll introduce you. And she turns, staggers a bit, and then puts her finger over her lips as she starts to like drunkenly lean against the wall and stagger into the room follow you <laughs> oh, while this is going on what are you uh, trying to extract from these heads uh I I guess uh I'm trying to carefully and safely like get the teeth out and also get to what I'm guessing are salivary glands that hold it. Should you be wearing some sort of gloves? Yes, that's why. That's, <laughs> this is this is why I say carefully. <laughs> like like I'm not just reaching in like bear pods. 
Okay. You have some protection equipment on, but it is still a dangerous task to try and get uh, trying to get this venom out because of how long it's been. Uh, or you can go ahead and give me a either a nature or straight intelligence check, whichever you prefer. Uh, they're the same, so fifteen. All right, you know that most non-magical creatures, their venom normally dries up within several hours of the creature being dead. It is possible that this creature's venom has lasted, or it's the poison of its bite has lasted longer because of its magical nature. But you think it's still been quite a long time, so... You're... you're Basically, that's the explanation for why you are going to have disadvantage on this attempt to try to get this venom. Can I assist? You certainly can, so it'll be a straight roll. Okay, uh, and then, question, uh, does, is, hang on, let me figure out how to word this. So, so the disadvantage is, is because I'm originally is because i'm trying to get to where venom i think that the is, venom is stored because it's yeah because there isn't much left because a lot of it has dried up by this point because the creature's been dead for so long okay uh but, but he's giving you assistance by like pointing out directly where it should be okay and and just to, to reiterate I'm, I'm going for teeth and salivary lens yeah Basically, you're going to try and get uh, a vial of death dog poison. Mm. Uh, also, I have no idea what I'm rolling. <laughs> right! Uh, that would be uh, an alchemy check, I'd say. Still alchemy or nature? Nature, okay. <laughs> Not nature, sorry. Uh... Uh, survival is uh, collecting things off of dead animal, dead creatures. Okay. Seventeen. All right. No one using any arcane magic or anything. No. <laughs> Side hang over to Orn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, when somebody's that lucky and shifting I was, chronals, <laughs> I was here to prevent her from infecting herself, them from infecting themselves. That is fair. If I don't, uh, I don't they had rolled too here, low, they would have been infected. Successful. Yeah. Uh, you do manage to get a small vial of uh, poison from. The two heads. You you seem very lucky to have gotten it after this time. This much time has elapsed or elapsed. Yes, that's the word. So you can write that you have uh, death dog venom, and basically you have one application on a weapon or three arrows. Or the amount that's actually on here is only enough for like one application on anything and it has the same save and same disease on it as in the regular dog bite and it has a shelf life of three weeks okay thank you sorry ready no problem. <laughs> if you need the extent of the disease it's there in chat for you Thank you. Uh, and as, as I, I do with, with each of my attempts and stuff, I'm going to jot all this down into my, my notebook. And, and right. when I'm done, I will just kind of look at it and really, like, beamingly proud. We'll just kind of, like, perk up and look at everybody. And, like, we'll especially lock eyes with Orin and be like, huh? And, like, point, point to the vial. <laughs> 
someone who's been there over your shoulder pointing out different things during the entire event. With his assistance. He'll pat seeing your excitement, he'll pat you on the shoulder. Not not sharing your excitement, but like good job. <laughs> Accepting. <laughs> At this point, Grayson returns with his new friend. Uh, Mo, are you still drunk and asleep, or have you woken up with everyone else? Uh, Mo would have woken up, and he would have gone into that message that I sent you earlier. Great. I've been focusing on everything else going on. You guys can do stuff while I quickly move this over. I'm just gonna keep writing. <laughs> so, Amavasya, you seem to be collecting various dangerous things. Is there someone you are planning to assassinate and haven't told us yet? What? What? No. No. It's just, I like to learn, and these are free components. I kind of, like, droop down, realizing, like, oh, damn, I have just been collecting poison. <laughs> she, she's not, like, it's not, like, berating her or, or anything negative. She's just curious. She wants to know if you're planning on murdering something. It's probably something you should tell your boss. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> best, best out-of-context quote for the night. If you're planning on murdering someone, you should tell your boss. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow when I go into work. Hey, Kelly. <laughs> I need to start doing job interviews. I can't wait to say that in the Jew. Also, I'm planning on murdering someone. I just thought you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Cool. <laughs> And Grayson enters the room with his new dark elf friend. Also, the storm has passed. Oh, sweet. Oh, thank God. So, Lena will just stumble <laughs> into the room, holding Grayson's shoulder with one hand and the wall with the other. Uh, who am I meeting again? <laughs> Everyone, this is Lana, another old friend of mine. Lana, this is, and he'll like individually point at everyone. This is Amavasia, this is Yasna, and this is Orin. We'll bow when I'm pointed to. Isn't it a little early for that? Well, oh, it's fine. And she kind of like lifts a hand and waves it dramatically, and then throws her hair back. Like pushes a few strands out of her eyes that you didn't want to go. Raises an eyebrow, eyebrow skeptically. All right, let me guess. We have, and she points to Amavasia. Mm, dark leathers, knives, the belts, vial of mysterious liquid. That would be some thief rogue, something like that. She shifts her finger over to Orin. Mm, you, you've got the book at your waist. Like it's the most valuable, valuable thing. You're a, a wizard, or just reads books. And, mm, yeah. Grayson's <laughs> Grayson, and you. Hmm. And she staggers up towards Yasna and places both hands on your shoulders. Uh, hello? You have a sword, but nowhere on the pommel of the god. You have armor, but it's it doesn't look like a fighter's damage. You don't fight up close. She stumbles back against, like, the dresser that's there and just leans against it. So... A caster. 
Not green enough for druid. Not armored enough. Cleric. Sorcerer? Bard? One of those two. She waves her hand again. She's acting like she's brilliant, but Platt told her all this last night. <laughs> mm -hmm. Platt told me about you. She points at, at you, Grayson. He didn't mention anyone else, really. Just a group. Hmm. Grayson kind of raised an eyebrow. <laughs> Where is Platt? And on that note of Platt, um, unfortunately, he's not going to be able to continue traveling with us. His courier, courier ink mm, takes a sip from his coffee. <laughs> his life as a courier is really on his second profession. First comes monster hunting for him. And with everything we've come across on our short, short journey, he's going back to that. Lina here, her, older, her, her brother, is also a monster hunter. So we, he happened to run into them last night. So those two are headed off to go try and solve that issue. I'm sure they will. In the meantime, Alina here has decided to tag along with us, so long as nobody has anything against that. Well, I suppose not. I mean, they are your friend, it seems. And has anyone been looking has at to Lina? leave, then has to leave. Was anyone I, I, looking I at Lina as Grayson was speaking? Yeah. I would assume yeah, so, yeah. Yasna might be inciting her a bit. Roll an insight. I was I was gonna have Oren do that too. 18. Let me roll. I got two. <laughs> <laughs> roll. <laughs> uh, oh wait. Te technically I think yeah, it's four technically, but I rolled a two. A uh, soft twenty, I think. Yes. This bitch is drunk. <laughs> I rolled a 23. <laughs> <laughs> you often drink this much in the morning? No, actually I don't. I don't drink at all. She waves her hand again. I make drinks. I make drinks. I don't. Drink my own profits. <laughs> and she immediately stands up and completely sobers up, placing both her hands in front of her and, and holding them at her waist. However, I do play the fool on occasion. She's a talented actress. Yes, I will give a little, like, golf clap. <laughs> when someone thinks they're dealing with an idiot, they go soft. Go easy on them. I have trained very long, very hard, but every person I fight makes the mistake of going easy on me. What do you do in a fight? Hmm. Deduce yeah, most, most of our position. She points at you, Amvasia. Um, you have a, some kind of bow, correct? Yes. Shoot me. <laughs> I'm all set. Grayson raises an eyebrow, but also kind of leans in the doorway, interested. Orin, Orin actually smiles a monk, then. She Question, did Platt leave the gun? No. Or did Platt take the gun with him? Platt took the gun with him. He okay, he's just it here. Yeah, you think he's gonna leave that behind? He's got a gun. He's going monster hunting. <laughs> We're making silver bullets, baby. Let's make it sure. But yeah, uh, Orin will smile and say, a monk then, and then 
I have no objection. She just nods her head and keeps looking at Abafasia. Uh, yeah, I don't really do the shooting of um, anybody not attacking. Oh, you maliciously. Okay. No, Alana, that's not an invitation. I did not actually hear what Grayson said. No, Lana, that is not an invitation. As she, as some of us, he was saying, they don't attack someone that isn't attacking them. <laughs> Fair enough. Your small friend guessed that I am a monk, to some degree. And she pulls your quarter staff off her back and takes the two pieces and snaps them together and twists them. At this point, Mo, you would have finished your stuff in your room and been able to walk by to see them. What's up? Uh, Mo, good morning. Hello? Who are you? Good morning, Mo. Lena. Hello, I'm Mo. I saw you get your ass beat last night. Yes, that is part of the rope tour. Right. You may want to learn to keep your hand on your chin. I'm sorry, what does this person look like? Uh, I cannot show her picture. Okay. Uh, without putting it in Discord, so I'm gonna do that. I already. Did you say keep my off. hand on my chin? Yeah, keep your hand on your chin. The last hit was an uppercut. She's Ooh. telling you. To, she's telling you to keep. She's telling you to block for your chin. So oh. during a fight, I I should hold my face like this. <laughs> keep, it, keep it here and he's gonna be like squishing his cheeks together and like talking he's oh, like yeah. is this and she, she turns she turns to you Grace and just looks you dead in the eye oh dear he's not joking I'm well aware he's a good man though <laughs> I hope so I'm going to make more coffee that would be delightful I've heard stories of this coffee from 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 my village. I've never had any though. Could I try? She just walks out of the room. Now com walking completely sober. That that sounded like a soft yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not a solid one, but a mini. <laughs> She if she comes back with an extra cup of coffee, I'll drink it. If not, no, no problem. Oh, she's going to the bar. She has her brewing set up. Brewing in the bar. Brewing in the bar. Um, you would know that Sybil would not let you brew in her establishment. I get coffee. And, and she sells coffee. That's <laughs> digging into her profits. <laughs> yep. And... She really makes coffee for the bar. <laughs> uh, yeah, you you've seen Sybil before, and you've been like you've. How long has she been in this tavern? Uh, I mean, she's probably been part of the guild for several years. Oh yeah, you know that uh, Sybil has thrown people out for less. And it's probably not safe for your health to go against Sybil, especially in this place. She's known to cut a bitch. No. Then she will have. To, then she will have set her brewing apparatus in her own room, and that's where the coffee comes from. That's better <laughs> and safer. 
<laughs> so yeah, go ahead and uh, give me a brewing check. Using uh, intelligence. That's not the stat you want to hear. It's fine, because it was an 18. So... 19. <laughs> okay, that tells Negative a lot. one intelligence. Now you gotta know stuff to be able to brew things properly. But uh, yeah, you managed to make a pretty good coffee brew with uh, your supplies you have at hand. Like a survival kind of character than the what's this plant character. <laughs> so what's everybody else up to? Everyone just hanging out in Alvasia's room? Apparently. Um, oh, is that where this conversation took place? That's yeah. how all this has been going. Um, yeah. Good to know. Also, when returns with coffee. Very small glasses of espresso. Grayson takes another if there is enough for all three of them. There think. is, in fact. Yes. <laughs> and she gives that one to, a cup to everyone and then looks at Mo, looks down at what she's preparing to give him, internally debates whether or not this is a good idea, and then hands it to him anyway. <laughs> so these are like small cups, right? These are like very small. They look almost like shot glasses that have been stretched open. So I feel for like this huge dude, this would look almost cartoonishly small. It's a thimble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So Mo will take this quarter of a quarter shot of espresso. I just recalled what espresso tastes like when you don't put anything in it. Oh, this can be fun for Mo. Uh, give, give me a while to decide how me, Mo reacts to this. Actually, hold on. Well, that's going on. What's everybody else up to? Yasna's making sure Amavasi isn't uh, damaging themselves with the her uh, her new toys. <laughs> what kind of like but, sense of gaze? But she's also like. Not happy that Platt is gone, <laughs> but she's not like making a, a huge deal out of it because he needed to go. Yeah, didn't even say goodbye to anyone else. Yep. Yeah. Since Mo walked in the room, has anybody specifically said that Platt is gone? Not oh, yet. Right. Okay. <laughs> sleep through the company meetings. <laughs> That's why you don't sleep through the company meeting, says to team old people. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah. I just I just became the bell curve for the age of this group. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm still team old people though. Well, no, it's actually technically that. should be older than Oh god, is she older than Grayson? Huh? She How older old than Orn? I don't think it's possible that something can be older than Orn. <laughs> Elves in this world live to about 600. Okay. Like 600, 660. Um, no, she was a child when Grayson knew her, and big air quotes on the child okay. for Elf. She's probably... She probably just cut her first century. Alright. So, like. You can figure that out uh, next session. <laughs> or in between sessions. Uh, eventually, everyone uh, makes their way downstairs after trying their espresso. Uh, the guild hall is yeah, reasonably full. It seems like a lot of people stayed here, and there might be a very good breakfast special. I have no idea what that thing you just posted is. But uh, sitting excitedly at uh, one of the tables as all of you comes down is Brex. He appears to be sitting there and staring up at a lot of you and uh, seeing Mo and Amavasya and Orn all together. Wait. 
just breaks out to a giant grin. If Grayson is like leading the way and catches him, he will immediately stop and look at Amavasia. <laughs> like, mmm. He immediately, upon seeing you guys, gets up and starts heading over toward the stairs, but you guys are currently coming down. <laughs> what a uh, attempt to so, hide. So, <laughs> no. That's too much. Being a giant <laughs> who has had his first ever caffeine in his life <laughs> is go. going to walk up to this friend that uh, <laughs> loves hearing stories and be like, Hey man, you want to hear a lot of stories really quick? <laughs> yes, I would love to. That would be amazing. Could you get to the rest of your friends to come and join us? No uh, time. Let's go. We need to walk and talk. And Mo is going to like grab him and like start walking out of the tavern with him and be like, yes! I need to tell you about the time that I fucking died, bro. <laughs> you didn't say that last night? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Even if he did, he's ready to do it again. <laughs> I am now yelling that I fucking died in this poor dragonborn's face. He doesn't seem phased at all. And that seems incredible. Sit and we shall talk. I will get lots of food for us. No, nah, oh, food? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent breakfast here. Sybil is an amazing cook when she isn't trying to kill you. Oh, uh, uh, I was going to say walk and talk, but yeah, now that there's food involved, I think we should get some food. That would be amazing. Please sit, have a seat, and it is all on me. Do enjoy. Let's begin. So Lena yeah, who's on him about to get into this conversation? Lena leads over to Grace <laughs> and goes, "Did I just cause the greatest thing ever?" Potentially. Well, I've already got a greatest thing ever in my books, but you know, maybe a close second. Uh, do we still have that letter that we were gonna deliver, or does Platt have that? Grayson has it. I get Grayson. Has it Grayson. Grayson was, however, too tired to think to show it to you, so. <laughs> but he does have it. All right. So the two of them are off having a lightning speed conversation to spite his speed up. Uh, yeah, despite most speed up, Brex appears to be keeping pace with him. And... Uh, Occasionally pulling a bit ahead. Great. You don't know how any of this is possible. Yeah, he'll take a seat and act like he's invested in listening. He's he, like he probably actually is trying to follow it for a little bit, but then very quickly gets lost. You've heard a couple of these stories from Mo before. Oh, true. And as such, is just mooching because he's out of money. <laughs> that is very fair and anyone who sits down there will have their meals already paid for by Brex hey uh, Amavasia sold the food yeah very reluctantly but <laughs> and he will jump around from Mo and kind of had side conversation tried to have side conversations with Orn and Amavasia at the same time and he's just writing down everything everyone is saying. Orange, and Orange just doesn't really engage invested. today. He's just got a book out. If he at any point questions on Mavasio's divinity, Grayson will quickly shut it down. Oh, he doesn't seem to question it. He's more asking or, sorry, more sorry. detailed questions about it. <laughs> right, and yeah, like if he ever references Amavasia, like, so you're a god. I'm going to say, no, 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 she is not a goddess. They, they. Uh, hmm, are you sure? Have you done any detailed tests to uh, disprove this theory of yours? So, by the way, I don't know you. Who are you? I am uh, Brex. What is your name? Are you a practitioner of the arcane like uh, the others here? Name's Grayson. Not familiar with the arcane, no. But I hmm. do wield magic. Ah, that is quite interesting. What is uh, the source of your power? Mine comes from a very long bloodline, and he starts going on about the bloodlines and the uh, part nobility of Alatira and dragons, and he'll 
after a half hour, you guys have all eaten and Rex continues to be going at lightning speeds. On his background and history. <laughs> at this point, Mo, the caffeine has worn off. Immediate crash, just like on the spot falls asleep. <laughs> well, that is quite interesting. But I guess we can uh, discuss other things. Um, how about you there? Hmm. I, oh, yes, I've already spoken with you. And he kind of just wipes a hand from the Dralic. He's already spoken with you. Uh, it's great detail, but he's more interested in these uh, newcomers who have just uh, joined our wonderful guild here, or at least are staying here for the moment. And eventually he'll get also to uh, you, Yadna, if you have sat down as well. She, yeah, she will have. Just. She, ah. She'll be eating and uh, she'll perk up a little and be like, well, I'm a explorer of new and old things. Ah, that is quite fascinating. I am somewhat of a researcher, but uh, I haven't done too much research yet. Mostly trying to get up the capital to go on such a uh, type of exploration to one of uh, the archaeological sites. But I'm more interested in the arcane. Hmm. You are a uh, dragonborn as well. Do you also hail from Alutira? Who are your... What uh, family line do you come from? Do you have any arcane talents? If you do, which uh, school did you go to for your uh, training in uh, the field? He will basically berate you with questions as well. Um... She would just be like, yes, no, I haven't, no, that's my business. But yes to Alatera. Uh, her family is her own business. But she's like spouting out these answers like as fast as he's giving them. <laughs> He'll continue to kind of pry a bit more into where you studied your, or if you had uh, any uh, magical talents and uh, your possible family. Hmm. Uh, Anyways. She will so. say her full name is Yasna Elokar, and that's as far as she's going to go, if he knows her father's name or not. Hmm, Elokar, Elokar. Hmm. It's somewhere in the back of my mind, but I can't quite put a finger on it, or claw, if you don't mind the joke. <laughs> Anywho, so what are the lot of you doing here in Scenaria? And uh, where are you heading off next? Are you staying for some time, or do you wish to join the guild? He's just kind of fielding this off to the group. <clears throat> we were here on a job. If you don't mind my uh, slight prying, what uh, job would this be? Uh, who is it for? What are you uh, doing? I'm uh, trying. I do mind, actually. Shine scale. Mm -hmm. It's my job. I'm already assigned to it. Man says that she comes back with a glass of water for Mo. He's just placing it in front of his head. Well, there's no harm in simply asking questions. Questions are simply the most harmless thing you can do. You can either not answer or you can answer. Or they could be uh, spouting off lies. Or they could be telling the truth. Either way, it's always interesting Speaking to gauge a job, person's reaction. Grayson. Mm, right. I've got the papers. Don't worry. Well, we then just, just leave make our me. delivery then. No, we should. Um, DM? Yeah. Where we were, where were we supposed to bring the papers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, that's all the way back in uh, session two. Um, we were bringing it to the to the count 
Uh, oh god, I can't remember his name. Drago, Draco, one of those two. Drake. Drake, Drake. god damn it. I, I, every time I get so close. I also <laughs> thought it was Draco for some reason, and that's why I didn't say it. Because <laughs> I knew uh, it You are heading to uh, Count uh, Drake's? Is that uh, correct? <laughs> None of us said that out loud. No. Oh, yeah, sorry. That uh, I thought not... somebody did. That was out of character, so I forgot. Grayson would probably remember. Okay, Count Drake. And Grayson kind of nod at Orin, like, should we get on that then? Stand up. And start heading towards the door. Nod and start heading towards the door. Oh, never mind, I can hear from now. <laughs> oh, yes, back. we've been this here this whole time. There's a lot of Rex asking a thousand questions and wondering who everyone is, who the group is bringing their letter to. And a lot of nobody answering that question. <laughs> I missed the question, sorry, what? He, Rex was asking where what you guys are doing here in town. Uh, where are you heading? Where are you heading off after you complete whatever you are currently doing? Or I'm just glancing at Yasna. <laughs> then it's looking down at the group. She doesn't actually know. <laughs> Wherever the winds take us. I find that answer very vague and unsatisfying. Uh, yes, that's very purposefully like not. You. Yeah. <laughs> not um. I'm having being forthcoming. Terrible connection issues. So if anybody reacted to that, I did not hear. I did not even hear what you said. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you're. You're. It's coming back. The Maybe. not robot. <laughs> Well, Brex, it truly was a pleasure to meet you and speak with you on these highly personal matters that usually strangers don't just ask upon first meeting, but it certainly was things that we talked about. All right. Um, see you later, then. Ah, no words. I will be here for uh, when you, whenever you uh, return. And I am looking very forward to continuing our discussion and uh, coming up with uh, more ideas, especially with uh, you, Mr. Orrin. You had plenty of great ideas, and uh, I'd be happy to speak with you uh, with on them further I'm and in sure greater detail. I'm sure is out the door by now. <laughs> yeah, <please. laughs> like, see you. I, I think said, all I of us you... are just out the door. I said that Do he you was know Igor? Pause. Oh, no. I have oh, no. no idea who this Igor fellow is. Uh, who oh, are they? And Mo walks away. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Who is this person? And he like, comes up and like grabs you on both of your shoulders and looking like at you with both hands. Who is this Igor fellow? Are they a god? Are they uh, some other individual that's of great power? That or... is a great question. Let's go find out. How do I use this key? <gasps> <laughs> I will cast Levitate on the Dragonborn. I think we're already outside. <laughs> yeah, but he's following us now. Oh, for, for. Like, no, you guys hadn't quite left yet. Just because oh, something so else. Uh, I'm going going to, like, just stab no the key up to the air and turn uh, it. Like, the saving the throw the door there. Levitate. Well, if if they haven't left yet, I have. So what? I'm not. Right. Yeah. You're gone. So, yeah. I I thought that they uh, were outside by now. Rex is looking low. Um, I'm not sure what you are exactly are trying to show uh, me here, uh, but I do not see again? any key. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you're back. You're a super robot. Uh, you're okay now. Get out what you're going to say before you go robot again. Oh, and no. he's gone. <laughs> just just uh, fucking bail. Lane will, will look at Grayson. Do we need to speed this along? Mm. 
Uh, everybody else in the party can see, yes. other than uh, Lynn, can actually see the key that uh, Mo is trying to open up nothing with. But uh, Lynn, it just looks like he's holding nothing. And Yasta yeah, will like oh. quickly like dart up to his side and take his arm and like veer him towards like everybody exiting. He's like, we're, we're a bit busy now, and she kind of puts a hand over the the key. And tries to give him a, a look with other than not now. <laughs> like... I'll get him. I'll get the annoying one away from your party. Go. Uh, just Rex don't moves oh, to follow. Just, just please don't kill him. I'm strong. Brex wants to know workout routines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hear some uh, loud. <laughs> the back area and uh, already sweaty and still shirtless Armstrong appears like ah oh, Brex you you have come to the right man I am quite appreciative of this come back to the training area I will show you my the workout routine that has been passed down the Armstrong line for generations and he just picks up the Rex and starts looking it back at Hold on! I have more questions! I need to! And he's already out the back. That was amazing. You're all welcome. <laughs> uh, everyone begins to turn to leave. Uh, and a dagger comes whizzing and is jittering in the door as you all start to leave. Mm. And you hear from back at the bar... Aren't you forgetting someone? You hear Sybil's voice. Oh yeah, we're missing plot. Oh, Martin. And <laughs> you see her pointing kind of up. And the light kind of looks up. Until we got back. And you see Martin asleep, butt naked, hanging from one of the chandeliers by his legs. <laughs> <laughs> Since when, since when are we his keepers? Yeah, in character Grace it is <laughs> Yes, that does that like head shake thing him. and it's just like mammals are so strange. <laughs> you took a job with him and if you cheat him, you cheat the guild. Technically, he's the one that got drunk and decided not to be ready in the morning. Also, I'm going with them. So we still have a guild representative. Yeah, but it's his contract. So take him with you. <sighs> Technically, we were approached as well. So it is much our contract. But he's fair, I get it. Let's get him down. Anybody have any thoughts on how to get him down? Yeah. Uh, how high up is this uh, chandelier? Uh, it's about... Uh, Without hurting him. Feet my, my. Off the ground? 15 feet? Alright, so yeah, I'm just gonna take my great club and like put it under and just like start like massively shaking the chandelier while casting Thaumaturgy, which can do the uh, rumbling. <laughs> 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 After like a minute, the, uh, tremors. This is like getting a cat unstuck from a tree, but with a very different end result. <laughs> uh, he's currently hanging upside down with one of his legs like looped in to keep him up there. But uh, after a moment of shaking, he eventually comes loose and falls down, crashing onto one of the tables. I would like to try to catch him, like Superman style, in my arms. <laughs> sure, give me a. Give me a dex check to see if you could like quickly drop your club to go and grab him as he falls. Oh, nope. Sure. That's just as good. Uh, he <laughs> lands on him top in the face. of you. <laughs> and oh, okay. the two of you go crashing down and with his weights and then moving on to your weights and with the great club also falling. A lot of you crash through the table that you were standing on to try and Prod him down. I wasn't standing on a table. He's part giant. Right. <laughs> well, you fall onto the table right next to where you were okay. standing as you tried to dive to try and catch him. Uh, as we land, we're like, so, uh, 
do you come here often? <laughs> He's still asleep. <laughs> hey, 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 wake up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what? And he actually suddenly jerks up and punched or do you come here often? Uh, that, there should be a plus two on that. Does a 19 hit you? Yeah, barely, uh, but yeah. Yeah, he punches you in the face as he suddenly wakes up. Yasna's gonna walk up behind Martin and just put a really, really cold hand on the back of his neck and be like, you need to wake up and calm down and get ready. You are making us all look bad. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, he suddenly, like, does the legs cross and hands quickly down. Um, where are my clothes? That is not our problem. Go That's find a good question, him. though. If you yeah, don't find I'll be back in a moment. And he quickly runs off. <laughs> Put it on the <laughs> Just for fun. That's a, uh... An 18 intimidation. Yeah, he... To get him up on his head. And, uh... <laughs> As he's running, he doesn't run upstairs. He runs through the gap, which Armstrong ran off with Brex earlier. You can hear Sybil. I'll take the payment of the table from your pay for this job. He's like, right, right. Uh, and he just keeps running. I'm, I'm just going to try to start mending it back together. You get about yeah, it's not a quarter help. of the she way mend through. As well. All right. You get half the table repaired by the time he uh, gets back. And he's uh, fully clothed, fully armored, and... Uh, uh. So, uh, are we going to go see uh, Count Drake now? Yes. I'm just saying Count Drake is a vampire. There's, there's no way. He's, <laughs> I, I'm saying he's an accountant that's taking his job way too seriously. <laughs> You know, a One, count is uh, an uh, actual uh, like two, uh, title uh, uh, in uh, nobility. Yes, we know. Yeah, that. Do. He's, a, he's a guy who's an accountant that also has the title of count, and I refuse to accept that that's not just him <laughs> taking his job. <laughs> Damn, we still had the silver. I would spend all of my silver right now to make that cannon. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, Merton is with you all, and. He begins to show you to where Count Drake's house is next week, where we pick okay. up. <laughs> and if you were going to continue with that, I was going to be like, I do need to get to bed. Yeah, Maybe. I saw it at 10 o'clock, so that is perfect time for us to sign off for tonight. Curse <laughs> it's already 10. Mm, so nine for me. I can start going. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just moved to the <laughs> middle of the country. Welcome from the past. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 10 EST. East. Yay. East. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, yeah, guys. Hey, look. Eastern Standard Time. What? Drink. Oh, my lord. You're <laughs> 12. <laughs> Look, I, uh, I, can, I can lift things. Yasna has a plus five now. to intimidation without even being proficient in it. So just... uh, Yasna's like, scary. She's a scary yeah. mom. So, I used my level four uh, ability score improvement so I wouldn't have negative on everything other than wisdom. Uh, <laughs> Which is why I say that Mo is just bad at everything. <laughs> I'm looking at his sheet and yeah, Mo is. How do you only have one skill proficiency? That should that is. I not... don't know. <laughs> no, you that just not right. Backgrounds give two and classes give two at the least. Is yeah. that true? Okay, maybe I need to figure something out. Oh, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I am brand new and I have six. You need some skill proficiency. <laughs> Do monks get that many? Damn. Um, so monk gets two, background gets two. I get perception from being an elf, mm. and I get um performance from being a drunken master. Ah, okay. 
By the way, thank you, Internet, for dealing with our shenanigans, and we'll let you go now. <laughs> You're welcome, Internet, for being welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>